On today's show, New Zealand firm Go Rentals adds 10 Model 3s to its fleet and customers are eagerly awaiting to get behind the wheel. Energica's CEO hints that ultra-fast 15-minute rapid charging is coming to its motorcycles soon and Kia officially opens the order books in Europe for its EV6 electric car and demand is already super high. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. We start today with a great story from New Zealand's homegrown car rental service, Go Rentals. With six locations from Auckland to Queenstown, it's just taken ownership of 10 brand new Tesla Model 3 EVs that you can hire through the service. The cars were purchased with assistance from New Zealand's Government Energy Efficiency Agency, and it's hoped that these 10 cars will be the first of many EVs to join the 1100 strong Go Rental fleet. Of course, while you might think of a rental company as being primarily for visitors to New Zealand, the company's owner, John Osborne, says he also thinks prospective EV customers will enjoy renting a Model 3 for a day or two to see if an EV suits their needs. You can rent a Model 3 from $150 a day at gorentals.co.nz. Chinese company NIO has officially announced its market entry into Norway at a special conference in the nation this week, making it the first country outside of China where NIO will establish a full ecosystem of sales and service. NIO says that the ES8 will be the first of its cars to go on sale in Norway, with the ET7 following in 2022. In September next year, NIO says it will also open its first delivery and service centre in Oslo, offering mobile service and car pickup and delivery services. In addition, the company says it will establish its own charging and swapping network for customers in Norway, with four NIO power swap battery stations active by the end of 2022. As in China, NIO will launch its lifestyle brand, NIO Life, in Norway for local customers. It will collaborate with two Norwegian artists in the process. Between 1993 and 2004, Ford produced a high-performance version of its F-150 pickup truck, which it called the F-150 Lightning. And this week, car and driver claim that name is coming back, this time attached to Ford's upcoming all-electric F-150. While Ford hasn't confirmed the naming convention, it's already known that the electric F-150 being developed by the company and due to launch later this year is going to have more torque and more horsepower than any F-150 to date. The other reason we think this rumour is likely true, though, is that Ford has already used past performance brands, namely the Mustang Monica, for its all-electric performance crossover. So far, that's worked great, so there's no reason why Ford wouldn't want to repeat this success. Another highly publicised crash occurred this week involving a Tesla Model 3 crashing into an overturned semi in Fontana, California, sadly killing the driver. While I should state that there's no official statement on the accident yet, early indications from social media accounts that likely belonged to the deceased suggest that he may have not fully understood the difference between autopilot and full self-driving beta, while unofficial reports claim he was not part of the FSD beta program. It comes in the same week as multiple sightings of a brand new Tesla with a temporary plate driving down the freeway in San Francisco with the owner in the rear seat and nobody at the wheel. I know that you all know this, but remember, Tesla will be the first to say that autopilot is not autonomous. And in our opinion, anyone who treats it as such deserves their car and their license to be taken away. The town council in Normal, Illinois, where Rivian's production facility is located, have conditionally approved an amended site plan to expand the automaker's factory. In addition to just over a half million square feet expansion to the factory itself, the town council unanimously gave its approval for Rivian to add new structures adjacent to the factory, charging infrastructure as well as a new entrance. With initial deliveries due to start next month, Rivian's expansion is great news for both the town and the company, but don't expect building work to begin there immediately. The 380 acres of land just acquired by Rivian in preparation for the expansion needs to be rezoned from agricultural to industrial. As usual, 
will let you know of any updates. The Ford Mustang Mark E has just been given a small price increase in the US, with all but the entry level Mustang Mark E Select getting a $600 price bump. The reason for the hike? All new premium, first edition, premium standard range, or California Route 1 extended range Marquis will get Blue Cruise hands free driving from the factory. So too will Marquis Selects with the Comfort Tech Package spec'd. While it's never good to see price rise, the Blue Cruise is only currently operational on 100,000 miles of US roads, but it's also a lot cheaper than many of the hands off and semi autonomous driver packages offered by other companies. If you've been paying attention to Tesla's quarterly financial reports, you'll know that it regularly earns a decent chunk of change for selling its excess regulatory electric car credits and carbon credits to legacy automakers who haven't been producing enough electric cars to meet tightening ZEV mandates on their own. One such legacy automaker has been Fiat, which has been paying Tesla for its regulatory credits for a while now. But that's about to change thanks to the recent merger that saw FCA join with Peugeot Citroën and Opel to form Stellantis. With Peugeot Citroën and Opel brands already producing high numbers of plug-ins, there's no need for the company to buy credits from Tesla to meet European CO2 goals. And as announced this week by Stellantis CSO, that means no more easy money for Tesla from Fiat. Shortly after it officially opened order books for the EQA electric car in February, Mercedes-Benz has just announced it's bringing two new variants to market in Europe. The first, the EQA 304MATIC, offers all-wheel drive and 168 kilowatts of power at the wheels, while the EQA 354MATIC packs 250 kilowatts at the wheels. On paper, these models respectively offer up to 426 kilometers and 432 kilometers of range. That's 264 and 268 miles per charge. A longer range version is apparently coming later this year. Priced below the German government cutoff for EV purchase incentives, both of these cars are likely to sell fairly well in Germany, but at 53,500 euro and 56,500 euro, they're not cheap. When it comes to high performance electric motorcycles, Italian company Energica is up there with Zero and Harley Davidson. But while its range of electric motorcycles are incredible fun, you do have to stop for a half hour every few hours to recharge. That might be about to change, though, with the company CEO telling Visor Down this week that lessons learned on the racetrack, combined with its large, energy-dense battery packs, means that rapid charging to 80% full in just 15 minutes is most certainly just around the corner for the brand. He didn't state when exactly we can expect such technology to become standard in its bikes, but given that's just enough time to visit the loo and grab a coffee, colour us very excited indeed. Kia has officially opened the factory order books for its brand new 2022 Kia EV6 electric car in Europe. Revealed earlier this year, the company says that it already has obtained 33,000 interested hand raises for the car, of which 7,300 have already signed and made a deposit on a confirmed reservation. Given Kia isn't starting production of the EV6 until later this year, and first-year production runs of new cars are always a little smaller than they are in subsequent years, Kia says it believes it has enough customers for 300% of its original planned sales volume of the car in Europe for this year. Let's hope that production can be ramped up to meet demand. There is no love lost between Elon Musk and his former employee Peter Rawlinson, especially since Peter is the CEO of Lucid Motors, a company that isn't directly competing with Tesla in the marketplace per se, but which has certainly been jostling with Tesla for performance spec supremacy. Peter Rawlinson was hired by Tesla in the early days to help Tesla engineer the Model S and, as he has recounted in several interviews, he essentially re-engineered the Model S from scratch. There are even a couple of videos on Tesla's site featuring Rawlinson talking through the car's engineering decisions, and at the time, Rawlinson was called Tesla's chief engineer on the company website. But this week, Musk again took to Twitter to claim Rawlinson was, quote, never chief engineer, adding that he was, quote, only ever responsible for body engineering on Model S. It's one thing to not like a former colleague, but revisionist history? That's uh, going a bit far. And finally, 
For people who grew up in the 1980s during the golden age of rallying, the name Lancia Delta is bound to make you smile. From the truly bonkers B-Class Lancia Delta S4 through to the slightly more sensible Lancia Delta Intragale, there's rally heritage in every single first and second generation production Lancia Delta that was made. If, like me, you've transitioned to a life without fossil fuels, though, the Lancia Delta rally cars of old might not fit the bill, except they might, thanks to World Rallycross outfit GCK. It's just unveiled a resto mod we really want, the Delta Evo E. It replaces the original engine with a powerful electric motor, retaining the gearbox and all-wheel drive system for maximum rally fun, and just 36 examples are set to be made, plus an additional 11 more powerful Evo E rallies. The cars will be available to buy wherever you are in the world, but I'm guessing the price is going to be pretty high. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.